Applications for Wi-Fi in transportation range from infotainment to hotspots to public safety, smart analytics, asset tracking, smart ticketing, smart advertising, improving overall operational efficiency, and many more. Candela products can be used to very effectively test some of these applications for Wi-Fi in transportation. For this demo, let us take a simple scenario of a Wi-Fi enabled bus with 60 passengers. The bus is parked at the depot and the in-bus Wi-Fi access point provides access to all the passengers in the bus and connects in repeater mode to the APs in the depot for backhaul connectivity. All passengers are streaming high-definition video on their mobile devices over Wi-Fi. We will also look into the scenario where the in-bus AP roams between multiple access points in the depot as the bus moves into the depot. To test these scenarios in a highly repeatable and automatable fashion in the lab, we set up this testbed using RF enclosures and programmable attenuators. A peek inside the RF enclosures shows all the components of the testbed. The passenger's chamber contains a Landforge system that creates 60 passenger stations connecting to the access side of the device under test. The backhaul radio of the device under test is connecting to another Landforge system emulating Depot AP1 in the Depot AP1 chamber. We also have yet another Landforge system acting as Depot AP2 in the Depot AP2 chamber. All chambers are connected to each other with programmable attenuators and RF cables cabled for a 4x4 MIMO connections. The attenuators can control the distance between the passengers and the in-bus AP and the in-bus AP and the depot APs. All components of the test setup are controlled from the LandForge user interface. Looking at a screenshot from the LandForge UI, we can see the four chambers and all the devices and components of the test setup inside the respective chambers. The passenger chamber in the bottom right represents the bus full of passengers. Radio module 1 on LandForge 1 creates 60 passenger stations connecting to the device under test. Radio module 2 can be used for an additional 60 passenger stations and radio 3 is used for real-time packet captures. LandForge 1 also has two Ethernet ports. The first one is used for managing the LandForge system from the UI and the second Ethernet port hosts a web server that can be used to stream video files and other web content to the passengers through the network under test. If we look at the Depot AP1 chamber on the top left, we have a second LandForge system LF2 that has three radio modules as well. Radio 1 is used to create the Depot AP1 that the device under test can connect to. Radio 2 is used for real-time sniffing. Radio 3 is used to create an ecosystem of other APs on the same channel in the depot. And Radio 4 is used to create other ecosystem stations talking to the ecosystem APs, creating co-channel and adjacent channel interference to the device under test. In the bottom right, we have the Depot AP2 chamber that has a very similar configuration for Depot AP2. As mentioned before, all the chambers are connected to each other using RF cables and programmable attenuators to allow the tester to create distance between the passengers and the in-bus AP and also roam the in-bus AP between the Depot APs. So here we are in the LandForge uh, user interface screen. Uh, to create a test configuration and to show you a quick demo. Now I already pre-created a test configuration uh, for this particular test in the interest of time. We can always create a configuration from scratch by adding new devices on a test, new chambers, creating paths between chambers, adding all the resources, creating all the various components of the test setup uh, can all be done from scratch from this user interface. So if you look at this UI, uh, just as I explained in the slides, uh, we have the four chambers. We have the passenger chamber that has LandForge 1. We have the DUT chamber that has the device under test. And we have two depot chambers with individual LandForge units as well. Uh, as, as for this configuration goes, uh, LandForge 1 is going to create 
uh, 60 or more passenger stations and then we have a monitor port that's going to monitor what's happening here and then we also have a server port on this LandForge which is going to be used for streaming video for, to the passengers. So basically there's a web server running on LandForge 1 and the passengers uh, on the Wi-Fi interface can stream the video from the web server through the network and through the device in the test and back to the Wi-Fi devices here. So to create a, a simple test, what I'm, I'm trying to do here is I'm going to run a Wi-Fi capacity test. So I'm going to choose the number of stations that I want in this test. So I'm going to choose uh, 60 stations and run the test for one minute. And we're going to download uh, layer four traffic and download a high definition video file uh, from the video server. And we're going to set the per station rate to about six megabits per second, assuming that's the streaming rate for uh, a high definition video that we're using here. And then we just hit the start button that starts the test and shows the configuration of the, uh, the test that we're running here. We are downloading the video file from the web server, which is at 10.1.1.1. And this is the sample video file that we're downloading. And each one of the 60 stations that we create will download, will continuously download this video file from the server. So you can see the video file, the examples here. I can play the video file and show you this is basically the video file that we are going to play when the test is running. So now we can see the test is running and uh, the traffic will start in a minute. So the two, right now the device in the test is connected to the backhaul to this depot AP. And then we have all the 60 stations on the Landford system here connecting to the uh, access side of the de device in the test. At the same time, we also have uh, the other two radios on the depot AP Landford system creating co-channel interference with 10 co-channel APs and 10 co-channel stations doing bi-directional UDP traffic of one megabits per second each for each each uh, one of the, 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 the stations and the APs. If you want to look at the traffic, we can see all the traffic and you can all see the stats being updated in real time. And these uh, basically these dotted lines show the traffic flowing. The green bar shows the, the client, uh, client currently connected. We can also see the received signal strength uh, of the in-bus access point from the depot AP and also the received signal strength from the passenger stations to the in-bus access point. Now this test is going to run for uh, one minute and we're going to run uh, traffic for, uh, for a duration of one minute and, and make real-time measurements. At any time in this test, we can snap a report by clicking on the snap report button and it actually snap gives you a snapshot of what's happening in the test at the time, what is the summary of all the APs, the DOTs, uh, and also stats on a per station basis, the measurements on a per station and a per AP basis can all be uh, provided in this particular real-time uh, charting. And then we also have real-time graphing that shows the throughput over, over time. Uh, and uh, we can see all these st stats of how long it took for the station to connect, uh, all the stations connected, and how long it took for DHCP, for four-way handshake, if security is enabled. Uh, we can also look at the throughput per station. So we had like 60 stations in this test. We can see that uh, on an average, they're, they're doing a little over six megabits per second, which is what we asked. But some of the stations were, not, were only doing about two or three megabits per second uh, throughput in this particular test. Okay, so now let us try a, a roaming scenario where we are actually having the 60 stations that are connected to the in-bus access point, which is connected to Depot 1. And now we'll try to move the bus from Depot AP1 to Depot AP2. And as we move the bus and the passengers along with the, with the bus from Depot AP1 to Depot AP2, uh, there is going to be a handoff of the, the, the Depot AP and all the passengers from Depot AP1 to Depot AP2 and we can measure the effects of uh, um, the handoff. To do the roaming scenario, uh, all chambers are connected to each other using programmable attenuators. So if you check, check, click on this box, you can see all these connections are made between the programmable attenuators and uh, b basically distance is simulated between the systems by controlling the program attenuator. So when we actually select the, the in-bus AP and the passenger passion and move it away from the depot AP, 
we can see the signal strength from the depot AP will drop because we're increasing that programmable attenuation between the device under test and the depot AP1. So now, right now, it's at minus 62 dB. If I drag it further, you will see that the received signal strength will drop and now it's at minus 73 dB because we're increasing the attenuation between the device under test and the depot AP1. So as we moved the the device under test from a depot AP1 to depot AP2, mimicking the motion of the bus from depot AP1 to depot AP2, we can see that the the depot the in bus AP is now connected to the depot AP2, and it's now seeing a good signal from depot AP2, and then it will hand off all the stations and the passengers onto depot AP2. We can see that the throughput has gone down, uh, and then now it came back up here. Uh, and the device in the test is connected to depot AP2 and now the traffic is flowing and the video files are now being downloaded through depot AP2. Now when we run this roaming test we can make a number of other measurements like how long it took for the in-bus AP to roam to depot AP2, how long it took for the passengers uh, to connect to uh, through, through the depot AP2 and all these measurements can also be made. Now when we move the device in the test and the passengers back up we can see again once again uh, that the device in the test will see very low signal from depot AP2 and it will hand off to depot AP1 uh, and then it will connect back again and start running traffic. So using this test system it's actually that simple to create an entire uh, roaming scenario. Now there is also a way you can automate this uh, whole process of roaming. So basically there is a way to uh, click on any one of these chambers here and create a path and then when you select the path you can move the device along the path uh, and then once you move the device along the path it allows you to automate this particular test and uh, and roam the device along these paths as many times as you want another really cool feature is we can right click on any one of these components in the test system and actually get a real-time capture of what's happening in the system. For example, if I right click on this particular monitor port, uh, it's actually currently capturing all the traffic that's going on between the depot AP and the in-bus access point. So I can right click and sniff ports and it's going to launch Wireshark and in real time it's, shown, it's going to show me all the uh, video streaming that's happening between the server 10.1.1.1 and the various uh, passengers in this particular test. Our Wi-Fi transportation test system prices start around $50,000. We can also provide optional on-site setup support and training for customers interested in purchasing the system. For customers who only have occasional test needs and don't need a system in-house, we offer test as a service where customers can ship their system and one of our engineers can run various tests for a week and send you a report. Please email us or call us if you'd like to see a more detailed demonstration and we'll be happy to answer any questions you have and would love to hear from you about how we can make this system better fit your testing needs.